Zuchten! Ireland has long been a battleground for women's rights on abortion and to this day remains the only country in Europe where abortions are illegal, unless the pregnancy poses a risk to the mother's life. Ireland's abortion laws, in particular the Eighth Amendment, which holds the life of the fetus as equal to that of the mother, was tested to its limits in the recent case of Miss Y. A migrant who arrived in Ireland pregnant as a result of rape was left suicidal and wanting an abortion. But 25 weeks into her pregnancy, she was told it was too late and her baby was delivered by C-section. The case has angered Ireland's pro-choice reformists, who are calling for the Eighth Amendment to be repealed. So we're just arriving at the Garden of Remembrance here in Dublin today, where they're expecting thousands of people in support of repealing the Eighth Amendment. I know there's buses of people coming from all over Ireland in support of this protest, and it's due to start any minute. Today, we are calling for free safe and legal access to abortion for all who live and work in Ireland. We have brought our wheelie cases and our voices as we will not forget the choices women have made in unnecessarily difficult circumstances to travel for abortion. Demonstrators seemed all too aware of the effects that abortion ban has on women, especially the fact that it forces them to travel abroad to get an abortion. An estimated 5,000 women have to travel overseas from Ireland in order to get an abortion. I managed to find a young woman who is willing to speak to us anonymously about her own experiences. My story, I think, is one of a minority, but it's important all the same. He tried to kiss me and I pushed him off and he fell off the sofa and basically grabbed my legs, pulled me to the ground and he raped me. When I found out I was pregnant, I fell apart. I couldn't walk across a bridge without thinking, should I jump? And do you remember the, the process of traveling? Where did you go to? I traveled to London. Um, I remember pe being put under for the procedure and I remember waking up and the absolute dizziness and soreness. In the middle of the night, I start really heavily bleeding, really heavily, to the, to the point that I actually thought my insides were just going to fall out. Nobody knew where I was. Nobody knew in the hostel who I was, where I had come from, what was happening. And all I thought was, I'm going to die here. Nobody's going to know what happened and nobody's going to care. But it's not my fault. It is the fault of the Irish government because they have refused to take a principled position of this. They refuse to see women as actual human beings. So it's something that is not my fault, but I am aiming to rectify, because it has to change. The power of the Catholic Church in Ireland has meant conservative values have remained strong. The anti-abortion movement, also known as pro-life, has been the more dominant and vocal group when it comes to abortions. This has led to a culture of stigma and shame, making it more difficult for women who want an abortion. We are going to work hard. We are determined to stop this abortion legislation in our country. Just on my way to meet pro-lifer Wendy, uh, she's agreed to speak to me and find out more about what their stance is and what they believe. When I saw how abortion negatively impacted a friend, obviously yes it's about this is a human life but also just about the impact that I had seen that it had on women. Um, so that's when I started to look at, well, is abortion good for women? Is it good for women's rights? Is it good for women's equality? Um, and I've come to the conclusion that we will have real equality for women when there's no need for abortion at all. And why is that? I think that, um, you know, it's the, it, abortion shows that our society has failed to respond to the, 
the needs that women have in a modern society. What's your reason for believing that women shouldn't have the right to want an abortion? Well, it's interesting that you asked me the right to want an abortion. So it's uh, assuming the position that having an abortion, i.e. ending a life, is a right. It's not in any constitution or declaration that an abortion is a right. Um, so that's quite troubling in itself, that we're in a, a culture and society where even you're being asked that question in that frame, you know, is abortion a right? But isn't the choice a right? Well, we have um, the right to choose many things in our lives, but I think in society that um, choices are limited all the time when that choice affects the life of another person. Our choices are limited all the time when that may harm or endanger another person. I cannot drink and drive. It is illegal for me to take heroin. I have to put my seatbelt on. Why? Because that choice may affect the life of another person. And obviously that's what abortion does, it ends another person's life. We want choice! So the rally's just started. We're heading to the front where a bunch of women have bought wheelie cases, which kind of symbolises the journey that women have to do to travel from Ireland to England and the burden that it is. We want choice! Hear our voice! We want choice! These are young, the new generation of young men and women who are standing up and saying, this isn't right. Women are dying, women are having to go to England when they should be getting these services here, which is considered a basic medical procedure in other countries. And I managed to all wear red, why is that? That's because in the 80s, women used to go to, when they went to England for abortions, they'd be met by other women as a support who would help them with money and places to stay. And as a means of identification, the women would wear, who were meeting them in London would, meet, would wear red. numbers are a lot bigger than I expected today I'd say a couple thousand are here we've got all sorts we've got women men women with their babies we've got anarchists we've got the performance artists as well this is so good people are joining us from the streets people are cheering us along we've had nobody be really horrible it's been fabulous have we passed the ministry of health yet this is Doing it right we now, right around right here, and so then when we get to the doll, we'll be in front we of the main thing. Okay. We say healthcare. We say healthcare. We say healthcare. So we've come to the end of the rally. We've arrived at Parliament Building here in Dublin. People are gathering as they listen to speeches. Since the foundation of our campaign in 2012, there's been a marked change in public opinion. We've been demanding action, demanding guidelines highlighting all the reasons why we need to repeal the Eighth Amendment and all the government has to offer us is the completely unworkable Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act. We can demand the right to decide what happens to our bodies. We can have an Ireland that treats us as the equal, valuable humans that we are. campaigning, informing people and getting people to really understand what this amendment to our constitution means for the women of Ireland because until there's a big appetite for a referendum, no political party will want to touch it in this, in this country. It would be political suicide for any party to suggest bringing forward a referendum. Um, so there needs to be large public support and that's what we're trying to build then over time with this campaign. Can you tell me why you're here today? We're here today to say that as modern women of the 21st century, we are not going to be bound by laws that were built in 1861. I think times have moved on, and as modern independent women, we demand the equality that the law should afford us now. I think while, while the church is still intertwined with the state, regardless of whether it be in North or South, women will be shamed. And that is the shame of our nation, that women have been and continue to be degraded and subjugated by a church who feels that they must control. And the way they control is through taking women's rights away from them. And this is just an extension of that. But with people coming out onto the street, with consciousness around the subject rising, people are here to say, 
that we stand with Miss Y. We stand with all the women like her in Ireland, and Ireland does not want this shame anymore. This speech was going to turn into the longest violent, angry scream.